In this video, we're going to take a closer look on how to use methods inside of Unity and inside of our scripts. First, it's important to consider what a method is actually doing. A method is used to perform blocks of code, and it's also a convenient way to organize your various tasks that you're looking to accomplish. So instead of putting everything inside of start with a lot of random logic up here, we're giving it a name like equip weapon or a name like set starting health, and then we can put whatever's relevant inside of that method block. It helps with readability so that we know that when we hit start, we're equipping our weapon, we're setting starting health and so forth. And these methods can get extremely long in an actual game. So it's very helpful to read it like a newspaper. You can say, what am I doing? And if I care about that particular thing, I can jump down there and look inside of the method and try to figure out what's going on. So let's take a look at the syntax of utilizing a method. The first thing that you may see is an access modifier. We haven't really gotten into these quite yet, but private, public, protected, and, um, and whatever else, these are going to determine which classes can actually access this method. So you may see something like that, or maybe nothing at all. You, you could leave that off and just have void set starting health. You'll see that a lot too. All methods will have a return type. And if it doesn't return anything, you're gonna see void. But if it had something like int or float, then we'd have to add a return at the end and say return and then give it a value to, to meet that requirement. After that, you're gonna have the method name. It's good practice to make this extremely relevant and descriptive to whatever this method is doing. And lastly, as an option, you can pass in data as something called a parameter, and then your method can receive this type of data and then use it inside of this method somehow. And it would declare it as a local variable right here, and then we could access the health, and then whatever we pass down into it would be um, used like that. Every method needs a return type. So if you're not returning anything, you just wanna to read top to bottom and then go back to wherever you left off, you should use void. But if you do want to return something, so let's say you do some calculation on the health or the remaining ammo or something, and you want to return after the calculation, then you could do that here. So you'd say, I want to run this method, but I want the return type of this to be integer. So it will pass back a value. And this is what that would look like in a larger script. We would say heal to amount. We would declare the parameter in the method signature right here. So we'd say heal to amount, give it a variable to use as a parameter. And then anytime we call this method, if we give it a value that matches this type, then it can use that. And we can say heal to amount and then we now are using 100 as this value, and we'd say health equals 100 right here. And you could see the reason you would wanna do that is because if you were calling the same method multiple times, but with different values, then you really wanna make that a variable and you want to reuse the method multiple times. You don't want a custom method for each thing you wanna do. And it allows you to reuse your methods and make them more modular. Inside of Unity, let's start from an empty scene. So if you have other things created from the previous videos in the series, then just delete them out. And all we're using is an empty scene with the defaults. I'm going to create a new game object called Player. You can reset the defaults over here, reset, and save it. Now on the player, let's say that we want to give them some stats. So we're gonna make a new script called Player Stats. Or right, we'll just call this player stats. And then we're going to attach this script, this player stats to the player to give this player game object the player stats behavior. So we're gonna open that up. And inside of the script, we're gonna empty it out. And let's think about what we might want. I think what makes sense to me to start off simple, we could have a int strength, Give it a default, int stamina, int speed, and whatnot. Um, I'm also gonna give a bool for powered up, just as a means to uh, test one of the concepts. First, let's look at how we can call a method that's very simple, just void and does a simple thing. First, let's open up awake. 
Again, you could use start or something, just don't use update. Let's create a new method and we'll call it void power up. And all this is gonna do, it's going to take our powered up Boolean and turn it to true. So after we call this method, if the player's powered up, then we'll see that. You know, if we added public here, um, something else could see this and say player stats that power up, uh, but they can't really access this variable directly. So that's just one way you could use that. And then down here, let's call the method. We'll just say power up. And so this is what you can do. You can create a custom method. You could have this do something and then you could call it somewhere in your code. Now let's test this by doing a debug.log before and we'll call this player powered up, question mark, space, pinned, powered up. We'll just print whatever the value of this variable is right here, right? And I'm just gonna copy this and paste this right here as well. Oop, key and save it. So first we're going to print player powered up, which by default should be false. We're gonna power them up, so turn it to true, and then we're going to print the new value. So save that, hit play, come down the console. You'll see powered up false by default, and then we run the method to turn it on, and then true. So now let's look at the concept of parameters. So let's say in this case we want to increase the strength. So we can make a new method called increase strength. But unlike our previous method, we want to pass in a value that we can add to the strength. Because right now we could say strength, give it a new value. We could say whatever the current amount is plus some value, right? Like we don't know what this is yet. And we could add a static you know, one here, but what if we want to increase it by two sometimes and then five other times? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter for how much to increase the strength by. So we'll say int, remember, it has to match, match the value type. So int, we'll just call it amount. And then we'll say strength equals whatever the current value is plus amount. Remember, avoid adding, we'll call, you know, we would call these magic numbers. Don't add random values to your methods if you don't have to. Um, keep them in variables and define them at the top. So we're taking our strength and then we're saying take the current amount and then add whatever amount we pass in. So if we were to say increase strength by two, then it would come down here, we'd pass it to and it would say strength is equal to three plus two, and then we, we would get that. One thing that's helpful to know is this is kind of the long way to write that. An easier shorthand that you're gonna see is called plus equals. And then instead of saying that again, you just say plus equals an amount. And so this is a shorthand for saying strength is equal to strength plus amount. So strength plus equals amount. And then we're just gonna print debug.log. Player strength, and then append whatever the current strength value is. And let's actually put that before so we can see the change. Save, come back in here, hit play. Strength starts off at three, and then we run the method, and now it's five. Cool, now let's say that we want to do it again. The cool thing about using parameters is that we don't have to change any of the method code. We just pass it a new value. So let's really up the strength here. Copy our debug.log again. Okay, save, go back, save our scene, control S, hit play. And all right, so you can see that we're modifying our one variable here, our strength, multiple times and we're creating a modular method and we're reusing this method over and over again just by passing it different values. This is why parameters are really important. And let's look at one more example. Let's say, let's say that we have something else that is, that is looking at the player stats. And again, we want it to be read only. Um, we want them to get the stamina, but not be able to change it. One pattern you can use is we can make this visible by saying public, say, int, so we want to return a type of int, and we'll say get stamina. 
Now, because this has a return type event, we're going to get an error until we actually return the value. So let's go down here and all we're gonna do is return stamina. So this is pretty cool. It's private up here, so nothing else can actually see our stamina, but other things can actually see this method because it's public. So when they call the method get stamina, we're going to give them the value, the current value of our stamina by returning it. So even though this is private, we're giving this to something because something else can see it because it's public. Kind of a weird concept. Um, just know that if you have a return type, you just have to return it there. We'll call these getter methods. This is one thing you can use. And the more advanced way to do this is using C Sharp properties. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend looking it up. It's much cleaner than doing it this way, but this is the, let's say the old fashioned way of doing it. Um, so yeah, methods, simple, easy to use, compartmentalize your code, use parameters. If you want to reuse a method, don't retype the same method with different values. It just doesn't make any sense. Try and set up the system of your method like this and then give it different data. And then also remember your return type. You can return a value, you know, if, if we were to say this, debug.log player stamina, if we were to do something like this, you see that? It, it's going to return a value up here. So it's gonna actually return three because we're getting whatever stamina is, which is three, and returning it. So when we call this method, we can put this anywhere where we would originally have the value. So player stamina is equal to get the stamina. Now, technically we can see this right here, but uh, just to show you an example, if we were to save this and back and hit play, see it's returning three. So yeah, you can, instead of using a method as a series of things to do, you can also use the method to get a, a value back. So pretty cool. Methods are, are very, very handy. It's useful to know the basics of how they work so you can start to build some more modular code.